Board of Bramahan County Board of Zoning Appeals to order. Um, I can call the roll. Jennifer Matthews. I'm here. I'm Alex Sharp. I'm here. David Connor. Ron Matt and Chris Berger. Here. And Michelle Summers, our zoning administrator. Hiding in the back. Is hiding in the back. Okay, the se second item is the adoption of the agenda. Has everybody reviewed the agenda? I turned it off. Yeah, I move we adopted it as a second. I circulate. Is there any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, it's adopted. Okay, it's doing good. Next <coughs> one is the minutes of the last meeting. It was a typo. Um, but the men just to use it, you'll have something to find. Does anybody have a copy of it? I, have I put my, something has gone from my printer. I thought I had the copy. Of I thought oh, here. Did. You got it? Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be an A instead of a B. Well, it was a. a well, just the act of the printer anyway, so email to That could be subject to a, a minor typo that Jennifer is going to honor. Yeah. We have I have I move that they be accepted as circulated <coughs> and modest with the with the with the with the with the with the second. Is there a second? second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. The third item is the Brannock variance. And what's the time? Is there a file here? Is it Michelle? Do we have a file on that? Mm -hmm. See if you sign up here, then you can take a Does she have the file on that? <laughs> okay, so the Brannock, you're here, you both come up, thank you, come forward. I guess, do I swear I'm going to do this? I guess. Mm -hmm. I, okay, I swear I'm going to do this whole thing. You both swear to tell me the whole truth, not the whole truth. Yes, I do. And you, can you identify yourselves? I'm Sandra Lee Brown. Uh, what you're talking about. Okay. And you're the owners of this property that is the subject of this? Yes. Okay. Do you want to go ahead and just tell us a little bit about it? Um, sure. Um, I bought the property in 1999. Um, it was the old John um, Tap House. And John Tap House. As in Tap's Road. Yeah. Um, so it has three acres in its entirety. It was. Um, parceled out of a larger piece of property. Um, I brought horses to the property in 2002, fenced the property. Um, there's a septic field, it's kind of noted on the plans, but there's a septic field in the, on the, yeah, there you go. And um, this past year, we don't have a running generator, we have two horses. And we have a two stall barn and you know, they need turnout. So this year we had, it was, we had to confine them to, we try to segregate the pastures and we confine them to one pasture and there was so much mud and so much runoff that we want to create a sacrifice area, which is going to be a 50 by, approximately 50 feet by 50 feet. We're going to put geotech fabric down. To stop the erosion. To stop the erosions where the horses are going to be and then reseed the pasture that got eroded from them where they were. The only area that is flat enough without it encroaching upon the septic field or being in a swamp or being on a hill is the area that is designated on the plan. And this is it right here? Is what you're talking about. This is. Um, right in here? Yes. Okay. Yes. And there's a stone wall kind of a line of trees between mm -hmm. that and the road. So it's kind of got this little bit of a natural placement. You know, there's a it's got a right up against. Yeah, it's kind of it's fenced. It's fenced. But this the ideal slope for a a, user a sacrifice area is um, two percent. And this is like the flattest area. This is our drain field. There's a creek going through. This is swampy. This is a slope. This is like a slope going up and down. Here's another creek going through. 
So there's really, like, if you start to think about, even if you could, if this were flat, but it's not the 50 feet setback, the most practical place is here where we bring the horses in and out um, from the barn if they go in their stall. This would create the least disruption to our pastures. So the barn is here? Yes. This is where the horses? If you, during the day, they go in, or at night during the winter time when it's cold. So they're in now like 12 hours in 12 hours. Do you know how much hot horses? I mean, I don't sound on them. Right, okay. <laughs> that's good. Well, you, you know. He knows a lot about them. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay, well, I've, got, I've been bitten by them. Yeah. Okay. So ideally, we, you want to have a, what they call a sacrifice area. is an area when the weather's really bad, they have a run and shed, you've got a hay bale in there, and then they don't destroy the rest of your property running around. Mm -hmm. What is bad weather? Just rain? Rain. Um, what we had the past two years. The precipitation, yeah. yeah. I mean, I know everybody has seen it, but it's just, it was unbelievable. It's like canal water. But what is the purpose of the run in and shed just for No, I, I get it, but I can run it. Well, you said you knew about horses. <laughs> well, now, is it just basically for shade? For shelter out of the out rain the or bad weather. Yeah, rain, rain, and heat, all three, but not so much sun. Yeah, yeah. the sun, yeah. It's, yeah, they go in the. Yeah. The main thing is flies don't go in. And uh, my horses never go in in the wintertime. They're in all summer long. Oh. During the day. Yes. Don't and they come those. out at night. Yeah. Thanks to fly That's what we do too. Fly mass. Yeah. Yes. And then we've changed it in the winter, let them go out during the day and come out sure. night. Because they kind of get, they like being in their little crib, you know. So, okay. Well, does, does the board have questions or initially clarifying questions or anything? I'm going to open the public hearing. Obviously, it's not going to be very active. But, you don't know. But at first, if, does anybody have any? Just have one in the back. Please, from page 10. Okay. Is there, there isn't. questions, anybody? I have some questions. Is, is this it? Yes. yes. <laughs> Can I that's, no, that's the, um, the oh. prototype. That's not the official. That's just a mock-up to, to, to give us a feel for what it's going to be. Yes, kind of. Well, um, had you started construction, if I look at this? Um, yeah, the prototype mock-up, I mean, is that yes, those words for what, started? What happened is that, um, to, to talk in all honesty, was that I The only one honesty here. Yes. Well, I mean, besides the prototype. Um, and you're sworn. Yes. Was that there was a, a lot of pressure uh, at the little, our little farm to kind of get this done. And I started it, and then all of a sudden, on uh, Saturday, because I know I didn't need a building permit, but all of a sudden I go, set that, like that, and I go rushing in the house, I spent an hour and a half on the computer reading everything I could find on the, or, the ordinances and all the coded stuff, and I kept going from one to the other trying to find information. And that was a Saturday, and I, and I think on some Monday we called. You know, I so came I home was, on Saturday and he was, was in a really bad mood. I was really <laughs> yeah. So I think we were under the impression because it was a run and shed that it, I, yeah, we I, thought it's a run and shed. But I, then he kind of went, you know, wait a minute. So then, then there were other people who said, you know, you probably just go ahead and build it no, or whatever well, it is. No, but we weren't. We're not. Yeah, we're not we obviously didn't do that because out of our own volition we came. Well, I kept trying to find exceptions, like a dog house or a tool shed or something in Europe in all the language that I found online. But it basically said any structure is what all I could find. So I was, of course, very upset and when she got home with that. Was, so I didn't, I haven't touched it since. And that was a couple few days ago? Or no, that was no, about no, a month ago. Months ago. Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, your knowledge of the zoning one is very impressive. Maybe you may want to be put on some board or commission. I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to. What's this a picture of? 
That, oh, I'm um, so doing French, it. Doing French, 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 French. No, no, that's a French strain. That's of, part of the that, erosion of the water the, problem we're having the erosion the property. Of the topsoil because all these rains we had, it kept washing all the dirt down into the creek. So I said, well, I'll put a French drain there. there. Can you show them the picture? Where is this creek? Um, in this photo, that you can actually bring those together. Put those two together. You can put those two together and get those two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, see the gates just like this, but just lay it across there. Yeah. And there you go. On the other side of this fence, the one that you see I going this way. And so the, that is. So your this is yours back to yes. the other fences. Yes. Can you see this? Yeah. yeah. And what about the other side of the fence? That's Mrs. Tapp's property. It's 40 or 80 acres. What side? Something. Which fence? Behind our fence. Oh know? yeah, the one back back there. Yeah. Do you know when this parcel was originally created? 1997. 97. I believe one. It's in here somewhere. <clears throat> Uh, uh, 90. Oh. Yeah. 90 is yeah, that 97, yeah. That's John Bumgarner. Well, that's when John Bumgarner cut off the top the edge of the three acres, and this looks like his plant. Yeah, John. That's, that's basically, basically a picture of what that is, yeah, with my drawings on it. Now, typically, so this fence is that. <laughs> this, is, this is the fence? The fence is on the property line. So the power line went across there, too. Oh, that's the, that's power. the power line. Okay. Now, I do have one thought of this question. This is just for the board. Yeah. Not necessarily for you, but... Is, wasn't the intent of a variance to rectify um, parcels that were thrown out of black when the ordinance was created? Like, in other words, something that already exists. It's not necessarily. No, it's not necessarily. So if, if a, okay, so if a parcel was created under the current order. If, it, if it's grandfathered or if it's... Well, no, it was created in 97. Yeah, so, so was, that's the... So I, I, don't, I honestly don't understand how it was created, because well, if it was a family division or something? Yeah, well, John Tell Oh, yeah, yeah. He wouldn't be family division. Well, and three acres is fine because two acres is the minimum lot size. Okay. Right? Yeah. Isn't that correct? So, Unfortunately, yes. Okay, but so if it's okay, so it's a three acre parcel created under the existing ordinance. And then later on, a hardship is identified. Well, that's, I mean, well, that's, that's, that's what there's. The that's what, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Or it is. Um, okay, well, we're going to have a public hearing and get okay. that part of them. So, no other comments or questions right now. Okay, I'm going to open the public hearing. Uh, you want to let the rest of the people in? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, they're, they're wound around the block. Is there anybody who wishes to speak on this application? Michelle and Alan for our big hold your piece. Okay. Do you have a recommendation of any kind? No, they don't have to give recognition. Okay, I'm going to close the public hearing then. Okay, that's clear. Okay, now that we've done that. I mean, that would be my question with this. I mean, I'm also looking, and I realize, I mean, you guessing that you're looking over here at the drain field or somewhere over here. Mm -hmm. But, and what is this here? Actually, the drain field, that's the wrong direction. It goes, okay. I'm trying to remember. You know, Mench okay. Carter did it wrong. Right. Did I do that right? Yeah, okay, right. I can remember. Okay. 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 But other than being more aesthetically pleasing, I mean, is there any reason why the shed couldn't be further down here? And meet the setback. That's mine. That would be a question. I mean, I know it might be a little crazy. Well, I mean, I don't know if you're looking, if we're looking from here over, why wouldn't it be more like over here and come, come on? Uh, I think it would still be within the setback uh, restrictions. Up well, so where, where's the? Can you show me where's the house? Okay, the house appears over right here. So the house would be back over here, and this is the shed, and then this is, I'm guessing this is. I have to get my glasses. Here's the shed. You probably work the driveway. Here's the house. Yeah, Where's see, there's, 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 there's a, right along the road. Yeah. 
up here. Yeah, this is this is uh, this is South Foes. So this so is the house. So the how house, far is the house from the 40, 50 feet off the. Uh, so the house line. is not. Uh, who built the house? Oh, that was John Gabbard. 1937. Yeah. Wait, it already existed. Yeah. So your question is, let me see if I can understand this. Go ahead. Okay, well you've got, I mean you've got this. This is the outline of the run and check. Yes, correct? yeah, correct. Right. Okay, yeah. so, and it's now how many feet are you looking at? It's 50 30. by 50. Oh, oh it's 37 feet. 37 feet. Oh, I'm sorry. So, yeah. structure so, itself is 16 by 16. So if yes. it was moved 60 feet off of the property line, then you'd be maybe somewhere like in here. I'm just wondering why. Because of the slope. Uh, but I mean, the slope still doesn't appear. No reason. But it doesn't appear to be. I know it's a little slope, but to get something to get a two percent actually slope, no. you could grade it. I would think. Right. Well, we well, got a high where the drain field is. It's really high, and then it's sharp, and then it slopes like this. So it would create an even bigger. Um, I mean, Meg Carter could have an opinion on that because she said she didn't want. Um, in fact, yeah, I don't no, know. There's a couple of reasons. Um, one is at 100 feet. It places it actually. Um, see my. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> places it approximately right here. Okay. All right. Which. Um, so what would be the problem? Well. Yeah, well, know. first of all, the 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 shed has to be facing with the back to the north. And okay. open facing south. So if we put it in our very direction, if we put it here, the wind. If we put it here, you could. We have to back it up, and then we're starting to get there's close. A, well, there's a huge granite. There's a huge granite rock, rock and up right there, so, and it does start going up right where the whole granite is. That cannot be accidental. I know. And two large chestnut trees. No, no, I mean, I hear all of that. I'm just, I'm just saying, it, it sounds to me like it is possible that that ridiculous okay. is. Unfortunately, uh, under the guidelines on variances or whatever, it, it states that, you know, you have to be very sparing in granting variances, that there has to be an extreme situation where it's just, there's no place else on the property where, you know, the structure could go. And in this case, looking at the pictures and the property, I mean, uh, there are, you've got probably two acres of pasture, I guess, and it appears that there is area in there, and you might, granted, to, to get your 2%, you might have to take a backhoe and, and you know, level out a little area or whatever to, to meet that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, some way, I, I just, looking at the, pictures and the plaque and everything, I just feel there's got to be 16 by 16 square foot area in there that will kind of be if the project. There, there are places, but it's not convenient and not affordable. There's places that you're talking about that would have to be blasted yeah, out. We're bound by that also in that it states in the code also that convenience cannot be a, a, a factor. But it, it, has, it has to be a physical but if inconvenience is, is determined to be hardship. Well, what, no, tell me what your convenience inconvenience is. Well, first of all, it's easy to put, to, the way that our pasture is, to put it over to the left. And then to the right, the pasture is not, there's no pasture to the right. There's no grass that grows there naturally. So it's sort of like eating into, we're trying to, preserve as much pasture as we can for the horses to graze. So if we move it over, there's more pasture to the left where we've got that than to the right because there's a bunch of water running off where it is and that's where, it's just the way the water runs on the property. And I, I just don't hold that to what you're saying in reference to what you're saying, but the, what, uh, it's actually a 50, 50. 50 by 50 sacrifice area that she's talking about and where it's located is in an area, where we placed it is in an area where grass doesn't grow anyhow because of the trees and the overhang from the foliage and just the, the general condition of the soil, there's, the grass doesn't really grow there. So if we take a 50 by 50, not a 16 by 16 footprint and place it anywhere else on the property, we're actually 
cutting, into our we're pasture. eating away grass and foliage, clover. You know, we're talking about you know, it's it's habitat. Right. Oh, yeah. I, you know, I I understand that, but yeah. you know, we all we are you know, we have to look at code. Okay, so the answer is no. Is that what I'm hearing? The answer is no. Well, we haven't done that. Okay. No, okay. No, <laughs> I'm just going to cut to the chase. You know? well, now, well, he, he's sounding like he's having trouble finding that it's a hardship approaching confiscation. Or I don't know if it has to be a problem. Yeah, I, mean, yeah I, like I said, you look, you look at the property and, you know, it is a, a running shed, and I understand what you're trying to do and everything, but there appears to be other areas perhaps are not as convenient as that one would be, but there are within the, within the setback areas, there is some place where that, and, and quite honestly, if the, the surrounding area that doesn't need to, wouldn't seem to me to have to be level, I think it's just the inside of your shed. That, uh, no, because the horses are in there and you don't want it to be like this. The, Everything that you place it's, on a hill is going to move down the hill, especially with yeah, I mean, 2,000 cows stone moving and around all the time every day. So, yeah, it's, it's, um, it doesn't really... So now we can start. I, I propose that we, we should find these people. Yeah, they're, like, yeah, they're, like, mm -hmm. they're in contempt. We waited for them and we had to <laughs> Too bad they already did the skyline in. I know, but the skyline in is done. We already so. proved it for oh, you. Okay. You're already on that agenda? We've already yeah. moved off. We already yeah. 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 Right. We have okay, but we're done. We have to address from what we're supposed to be doing. I was, I was rehabbing three little yeah. baby birds. Yeah. Back to okay, so we're fine. When, yeah, we're when, fine. when I'm, I'm looking at 170-136 about 170-136 about variances. B1. Huh? B1. B1. Yeah, B171-36 B1. It says, I don't see, I mean, B1 says, the strict application of the terms would effectively prohibit or unreasonably restrict the use of the property or where the BCA is satisfied with the evidence the granting of the variance will alleviate a clearly demonstrable hardship approaching confiscation as distinguished from a special privilege or wait, convenience. Wait, wait, wait. That, that's market. the old wording. Well, that's the wording that's still in our ordinance. It no, it's not. Because what we have here no, is... Okay, the hardship The word is, is confiscation was removed by I think maybe so. Okay, so yes. it's got to be a clearly demonstrable hardship. But uh, uh, Philip uh, says it can't be of it or a special privilege. Right. But the hardship would be more than I like it here because it works right. a little better. The, the trouble is, and no, no, you know. It, it seems to me we are confusing the variant, the or ordinance and variance of house building with the use of a basically agricultural property. And that uh, the use agricultural, meaning basically horse use of it, needs to have or, or at least should optimize on the horse's welfare of the plan as opposed to uh, say something like a house where you could grade or bring in earth or do that kind of thing. And it, it, it isn't a, uh, a, a confiscation of the property, but it seems to be similar to that in that the, the use of it as an equine habitat, uh, it, it seems to me they have thought hard about it and uh, there seem to be real problems with everything else and in my humble opinion the uh, negative impact of a run-in shed on a, a equine facility is pretty minor. Well, hold, hold on, I just have, I have one thought about what you said. When you said about a house, maybe the way a variance is handled for a yeah. house. 
Now in the event of a house where the topography is so challenging that you yes. could not possibly fit any type of house anywhere except in this one location. But you had to one up there on Chester Gap like that. That may you know, done that, it that, that's, that, that sort of, to me, I'm thinking, you know, a lot that you can't build a house on could be a hardship approaching confiscation because you can't do anything with it. <laughs> The question is, can I have 50 more, or 2,500 more square feet, that's 50 by 50, right? of Good. grass may not be the same, I mean, isn't really the same level of confiscation because that's a fairly limited, I would think, limited inconvenience. Well, our grass is precious. <laughs> it's okay. precious. Well, I mean, it's, no, but it's a convenience of precious grass that you might have, uh, yeah, it's but it's still a convenience. It, 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 in my view, what what Chris said, uh, you know, I, I don't, I'm not going to quibble with the, uh, the principle of the thought behind it, but the zoning ordinance doesn't have any such distinction. And I think what you just proved about whatever equine habitats or any other kind of habitats is, if that's what the Board of Supervisors wanted to put in the zoning ordinance, then they should have put some special setback provisions. But they didn't. And well, we, think, we can't vary it unless we show, they show that there's a, a, a serious hardship. And the, the case law is that you, you can't even grant a variance. And we had a case like that, too, that you voted with me against Edward Spurgeon. You can get a variance for a, a, a secondary dwell building. If you've got a dwelling on there, an outbuilding or a, a garage or a barn or anything like that, I mean, the issue, I think, the problem is, you know, it's supposed to be one dwelling unit per 25 acres in agriculture, and it's kind of a substandard, sub-sized lot. And it, I'm not saying one was legal and all that, it's already got a house, and it's already got, as I appreciate from the plat, a couple of other outbuildings on it. And so, I mean, I hear what you want to do, and, you know, I feel like the back in the bad old days when I was telling the administrator, sometimes you just have to say, I don't write the law, I just enforce it. And the, the board's got limited authority to grant a variance, and only in cases where there's a hardship They've taken out approaching confiscation, but it has to be a serious hardship, and it can't be a special privilege or convenience. And if we gave you a variance to do this, everybody else in the whole county, then there's plenty of other places that have two-acre lots and three-acre lots and five-acre lots that want to say, oh, well, I, you know, I want to have horses, or I want to raise goats, or I want to do this, and I want to do that, and it's the only place I can do it, because I've already got this, and I've already got a house, and I've already got a, something else. And, you know, I guess my thing is, well, they should have thought of that when they, when they told John Baumgartner where to draw the property lines. So it is what it is, and I think you're stuck with it. Okay, Jennifer, you have a... We have um, ruled on farm buildings before. And one of the, and I'm looking for it, I can't find it, one of the uh, points was that it had to be back from the property line by the shadow. Uh, the shadow distance. The shadow distance? So there's the shadow that the that the structure would... No, it says. no in that it says in the ordinance there's two things they think are a problem. The, the, they, wait a minute, they got a, they got a setback problem, but the zoning ordinance also says, obviously this is an accessory building, you're not allowed to have, that's in the ad and it's in the that thing, you're not allowed to have an accessory building anywhere in a required front yard. And they're already sort of grandfathered by the house, which is what, 40 do you, feet? Do you know where that is? But there is something well, about the shadow. Yeah, I know where it is. Whatever section, section, uh, go down a little bit, can we? Who's, who's oh, section 137 is the 100 foot, but 170-70E7. 170 70 E7. Sure. And when was the ordinances written? 86. This one. So this lot was created in 
97, according to what you're saying, yeah, which was at, well after the ordinance 70. was when we have pictures. seven zero of oh. dash uh, seven zero subsection oh, okay. E seven. Yeah, in the back. I'm, I'm guessing what you're going to say is there were buildings that violated the setback. Well, there's a building that. It, it was a working farm. But if they're gone. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. No, there's a building there that still violates the setback. Yeah, but his grandfather was built before yeah. this okay. one. Barn shall not be located less than 50 feet from any property. Where are you reading? I am on E 177-E-6. Barn shall not be located wait, 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 wait. less than 50 feet from our property. Well, that's what I'm reading, which he told me to go there. E6. You may not have oh, a permit. I'm sorry. Six farms, yeah, okay. Shall not be located less than 50 feet. Right. Well, probably but it says adjacent in, in or adjacent to residential or commercial. This isn't in or uh, adjacent to a residential thing, but that's not it. It's section 7, E7. A, no accessory structure or use shall be located in any required minimum front yard except a statue, arbor, trellis, or flagpole. So this ain't a statue, arbor, trellis, or flagpole. It's also not a front yard, so. Well, it's a front yard. It's a yard around here. It means no, that it's pasture. No, no, it's, no but it's the yard. It's the, means the yard that's adjacent the to front. the road. Okay. That's the front okay. yard. Okay. No accessory structure or use shall which exceeds in 10 feet in height. So it's located in a minimum side yard. Well, it's not in a minimum it's not it's side yard. It's not in a side yard. We know where this came from. Yeah, but it came from one of the cases. I mean, okay. we probably have enough information to make well, a I decision. Well, I just want to read this because it's part of these, it, this comes, came out of Albemarle. Right, yeah. it's in the Albemarle. But anyways, it says, and this is five key principles to know about variances or whatever. It says, if there is an existing reasonable use of the property, neither an unreasonable restriction nor a hardship exists, any variance may not be lawfully granted. Application for variances to expand on Span an existing structure or to add more structures to a partial should fail if the use of the existing structure is reasonable. We have a house on the property. Yeah, that's right. And a bunch and of that, other stuff. That, no, that, that is the, the reasonable use of the property. And so basically, the uh, running shed is an auxiliary use or By whatever. But an unreasonable use? It's not an unreasonable use. No, it right. says, if there is an existing reasonable use of the property, neither an unreasonable restriction nor a hardship exists. So for any other buildings on that, there is no hardship available because you already have a acceptable structure on the but property. Is that not about varying, you know, having a variance with respect to a house? No, no, any, any structure. Or to any other thing. Well, it seems to it could be a garage, it could there. be anything. But, uh, Chris, depending on what sort of agriculture you decided to put on the parcel, I mean, you could, you could have a hardship under your definition on any parcel because you could say, well, I need, you know, five horses instead of three, and then you'd have a hardship. Let me just turn it around. So let's look, let's do the findings. And when we get to the finding about the amendment, why couldn't what you're talking about be cured by an amendment? Why is their property any different than anybody else's? You mean that it could the ordinance could be amended to say to that say that what Chris said it's through on the Senate. You saw the Planning, planning Commission bring it up pretty much. Sure they'll get to it. Go ahead. I have one more comment. Um, this um, she's lived the head of property since '99. We really did not um, have any hardship. Any what? Hardship. Oh, hard. Unrealistic, undue, whatever, too much stress until the weather has dramatically changed. Past two years, I, I know everybody's seen it, but wherever they live, but wherever you live, but where we live, it, we've got multiple creeks converging from different directions and it floods. 
I mean, massive flooding. We've contacted the uh, numerous times. They've sent people out. I've talked to professional excavators about you know the French drain trying to channel water um, without washing away topsoil. So I would. This is really not brought on by. Um, a change of heart or change of plan by Sandra. It's not like we're getting more horses. Well, let me ask but a question. It's, it's a hard horse. We don't want to spend the money. I have. So, has any other property in the district? Does it have the same level of problem? Do you think? Yeah. Every property. Well, I think you're. Well, it, it's exacerbated by the physical. We are we are at the bottom of a hollow. We've got yeah. a creek on one no, side. Chris, they, they also, I mean, it's not they didn't do it, but somebody created this lot, knowing that these were the rules, yeah. knowing that there's so a the set of arch, knowing that there's a thing. So it's a self-created arch. Yeah, that's another. Which thing. is another no no. Yeah, we're I mean, they they not the ones that created. They sort of bought it after it had been created. But the hardship, if any, exists because of any of these topographic conditions. I mean, whoever divided up, Mrs. Tapp or John Baumgartner or anybody, could have well walked out there and said, you know, someday, if we put the lines here, someday it's going to be a mess. But someday they, you're not going to be able to do what you want to do. But it's doubtful that they would have said, we need to be able to keep two horses or three horses. Yeah, they I think, I think probably the they couldn't have predicted Knowing that, that yeah. the property and the family or whatever it was all Tapp property. And so that may have been a family division of some sort that, that was sounds like cut out, but it was it was not meant to be it was meant to be a for a residence and there was no thought of farming or you know using it for farming purposes or whatever. It was going to be strictly a residential lot because it was surrounded by all of the town. Are the horses for profit? No, they're just horses. I don't know if you're talking about agriculture. Um, All right, let's. I make a motion that we go forward and do the. Do the well, could I just suggest one thing? Is we're supposed to all be, or not all, but three of us, be able to make all of the findings? Correct. Right. So if any one finding, well, let me. We're not able to make. Let, we don't. Right, make let, how about if I read what the findings are? So okay. then, and I can see where you're going. If you're going to say, well, what page is this? What page is it? I don't know. I'm just on that page numbers, but it's. 13060. One, the strict application would produce undue hardship. I think we beat that pretty good. But do we say no? Well, I'm just going to read them. Okay. Two, that the hardship is not shared generally by other properties in the zoning district in the same vicinity and is not of so general or recurring a nature as to make reasonably practical the formulation of a general regulation to be adopted as an amendment to the chapter. <laughs> yeah, I've Three, that the authorization of such variance shall not be a substantial detriment to adjacent property and the character of the district shall not be changed by the granting of the variance. Oh. <clears throat> might, might have that one. Four, upon an affirmative finding, the BCA shall determine what variance in its opinion is the minimum that will afford relief and so doing the BCA shall not be combined to the specific content of the appeal, whatever that means. Not Meaning we could uh, make them with less of a variance. Right. In other words, if they ask for a 50 foot variance, we could give them a 45 foot. Right? Or a 30 or a right. 20. Yeah, right, right. Five, last but not least, the BCA shall authorize such variances as it deems necessary to afford relief. In doing so, it shall prescribe conditions and so forth and so on. Um, so I would say if we start with the first one. Right. So, and the, the definition of section was 170 136. So, you know, it says that's the, in subsection B is the part that it says it has to be, it has to be a hardship and it can't, as distinguished from a special privilege or convenience. And so, the question is so, if we put this question to the board, what it is is we have to make a, a Three of us have to make all of those findings. So if three of us cannot make one of the findings, then there isn't any reason to go really to through all the other findings. Correct? Right. Okay. Unless they leave or something. In, no, no, so the, in before that but you still need the three votes regardless of how many people are here because oh, right. it's a good point. 
So basically, the first one is, do we determine that this is a partnership <laughs> approaching, well, not, you know, it's not unreasonable, unreasonable, it's unreasonable, it's unreasonable that unreasonably restricts the use of, of the, the property. property. Right. And I, well, I mean, Chris? I think it does represent a hardship. Okay. Okay. And that it means that the property can't be used for the use they wish. And uh, I, I think that it ought to be taken into account that this is a rural piece of land and that none of the neighbors have uh, evinced any objection to what they plan to do. Okay. Ron? Uh, unfortunately, I don't see it as being a, you know, that restrictive and also with variances you are creating a uh, history or whatever and precedent. what precedent thank you my word just went around you're creating precedents and you have to get that's what they say with, with granting variances you have to be very careful that you don't create precedents so you cannot so I will use my time to tell them no David. I, I don't think it's a, I think it's a special, they, they even use that word, they, that it's a special privilege or convenience that the applicants want. I don't think there's an unreasonable hardship, I appreciate there's some issues about it, but I don't think it's an unreasonable hardship that meets the test, and even if it was, it's a self-created hardship, which is a bar to making the finding because whoever, I know you didn't do it, but whoever made the lot, um, created the situation. I mean, if they created a 20 acre lot or 25 acre lot, there'd be places galore where you could put your running shed. But they, for whatever reason, they chose to make it a three acre lot. So, you know, that's it. So, anyways, I would that's so why it is a hardship. But you say, but, but it's it's like, even if it is, it's a self created hardship. They're, they're, they're not planning, planning to, to David, you create the lot. That, so, I can't make that plan for what you do. I think it is a hardship because it's not shared generally by other properties in the same zoning uh, district because it, they may be larger, they may be uh, used for other things. And so I do believe that um, there is a hardship. It's not toward, to the point of confiscation, confiscation uh, which was the old language, but it is a hardship. But it prevents any reasonable use of the property. It didn't say that. It, it doesn't it say, does say that. It no. says that you could do that basically. As a clearly demonstrable hardship. So is hardship. keeping horses a reasonable use? Here, listen. She's reading. Um, it's a demonstrable hardship as, as distinguished from a special privilege convenience sought by the applicant. It must maybe greater provided that all variances are must of oh, this is of oh, other housing is what it's not said that shall be in harmony with the intended spirit and purpose of the chapter. Okay. So you can make a finding. That finding. And you can make a finding. I can. And you too cannot. I mean, truly, I cannot make the finding. Because I see that you can do what you want to do in other places, and it's not as convenient. But you can still do it. So I would say no, I cannot. Okay, I'll make a motion. Okay. You can't make the findings. So we, so we can. No, uh, is there any further discussion on that? The one, I, 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 the one question I have is because it comes up several times is if it's in a floodplain overlay district, and I haven't gone back to look at what, what no, that means. Not. And I know it's not. Clearly, it's not. However, with the change of climate and the change of things, if they're having flooding because of the streams coming down, we're having over a flood of water in our yeah, Okay. So, so that to me, that because we've been dealing with that in my house. Um, Maybe we'll give you a variance. Okay, now hold on. Hold on. <laughs> but I think we, I think that regardless of how much more discussion we do, we still cannot make that finding as we do. So what are we left with then? Uh, find a new place. Find a different place to put the running shed and this. Um, or buy it from the in the strip of land. one of the neighbors. But, but I mean, or this. Um, Disaster area. What do you call it? The uh, sacrifice area. 
reconfigure and figure out another place to do it. Okay, there's a motion on the second that call. Okay, the, the one question I have is, were they to build a movable run? I don't know that that's our... Could that be, uh, would that be subject to the same... I don't know if we can do an answer. Yeah, that's what I would say. I don't know if we can look at the zoning administrator back there looking at me. I guess if it's on wheels, yeah. it's not attached permanently to the ground. It's well, my neighbor has one, and I pulled it into her uh, pasture with a tractor, and uh, it's... Well, you should have said that earlier, and I mean, we would be done. Well, I'm just trying to figure out something that you could do. Would that well, first make of all, there has to be an accessible place for water to water the horses. Hold on. We don't need to re-litigate all this. That's okay. a good suggestion. Yeah. No, I'm saying but if you were to do that, we're not, build a... I got it. We're not I got it. This very Thank much, you. But that is... We're just zoning. We're in a farm and a place. And basically, we... Okay, we can work that. with... Yeah, thank you very okay, much. Sure. Can we vote? Was there no. yeah. Okay, we can vote. All in favor of the motion to deny the application. Aye. 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 To deny, to deny. To well, we we haven't made the necessary findings to pass the variance. Yes. Yeah, so unanimously voted to deny. Okay. Wait, I got a form. I got a form. Do we need Thank you for coming. Is that supposed to be a roll call? Mm, well, it was sort of a roll call. Think about that with a, a mobile thing that it may obviate the problem for you. And then the language and the ordinance. Yeah, I mean, if it's not permanently anchored, it's what is not well, permanently anchored though? Can I what is permanently anchored considered to be? Yeah, what is permanently anchored considered to be? Uh, okay, Actually, that, that is building. So here, here right. just for us, so just so we can continue with the meeting, Michelle is suggesting figure out what you want to do, call her, and make sure it's all right. Okay. If you want to do something with a mobile or whatever, so they were it was on skids. Yeah, if you build it on two four by fours with posts coming out of it, you can pull it with a tractor. Like a chicken tractor. Uh, and uh, or a pickup yeah. truck. Or okay. My neighbor has one on the fire station too. Okay, fire station. But I think you, you understand see. what he's saying, right? I can make what we've got. Okay, mobile, and then we don't have to come back and see. Well, you have to ask okay. Michelle to make sure that it's okay. We might need a lawyer. Okay. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Okay. Well, this is complicated. Mm -hmm. The next one is the uh, rules and procedures. That's the next. I think. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, so David had. Reissued the draft. Is this a, did this <coughs> accompany? I mean, include everything that so everything we talked about. I added a couple of little things that I believe he will record the meetings electronically. We put the definitions, that more expanded definitions of the officer of the league, and then we also put in continued recess, but not tabled. This table, oh. this table, it's Robert Schools. All right, Article 4. Wait a minute, let me finish this. All right, you still have changes? Article 4, 4-2, call order. We establish a quorum and then we do a review and accept the agenda. Who did the motion in the second? Uh, I made the motion. And then I brought the <clears throat> so did, did you get that for dash two and you would accept the agenda? Oh. It would be the new C and everything else. Ron, here's what they and Chris Tom.
line of 7-4A, I am, or A, the whole thing is A, I am. Video and electronic recording. Every videotape or recorded by electronic means if practicable. Blah, blah. So that's new. Just going to see this for you. Right. And then you have D and you who says delete or clarify. Where, where are we at? 7D, 7-4-D. Well, yeah, I, I guess that I wanted to talk about that, but uh, uh, is that the one, first one there? Because yeah, okay. Well, that's, that's part of what, the, what, what Chris put in. Uh, because of, suggested we, things, and, and, my, and my problem with that, I must say, is I, I don't know if that, I don't know if that pertains to at the meetings or outside the meetings. And well, at, at the meetings, it's obvious that no one were aboard. So what does that mean? And then, and then it, it's, have five opinions. It's no. not. It's wait a minute. It's not. So let me finish. Remember, it's not I so brought, bad. I brought this up, the same question at the last meeting, which was if if I'm appearing at the planning commission to speak about something, but it, it doesn't I say want to make it clear okay. that I'm not speaking okay. for the board of zoning. Okay, but sometimes you are speaking. Well, for that but, I but would say. say. I well, but but wait a minute. But these these are rules of procedure. For our board yeah. and our board, how we conduct our business and how we conduct our meetings. And for us to start, and that's what the state code authorizes us to do, have rules consistent with blah, blah, blah. And so if you start putting rules in here about what members may or may not do or must do outside of the BZA meetings, when we walk out the door tonight, like, well, I, we go, I, my first question is, where do you, where does the board, not you individually or anybody, where does the board get authority to tell a member what they can, that's not so much what they can or can't say, but this specifically says, when they, it just said, it's out floating out, in the, I mean, it's, first of all, it's right in the middle of the section entitled, Conduct of BCA Meetings and Public Hearings. And then it says, when members of the BZA present their individual opinions and positions, they shall explicitly state that they are such and do not represent the BZA or Rappahannock County. Well, I don't. When I go out, when I walk out that door, and I talk to a lot of people about zoning because a lot of people talk to me about it because they either they know I'm on the board or they know I know something about zoning. Do I have to preface every conversation with, hey, I just want to make sure you know that these are my own opinions and don't represent those of the Board of Zoning Appeals or of Rappahannock County? And my answer is, I don't care because I don't think anybody has any authority from okay. me or you or anybody else. That's, wait a minute, that's one thing. The second part is, let's say somebody goes out and routinely violates that. Let's say that somebody who's not on the board now, but comes on at some future time, goes to a planning commission meeting and, and intimates, and Chris isn't there, and says, well, I'm here and I'm on the BZA, and, and we think X, Y, or Z. So he's clearly, or she is clearly in violation of that provision. What are, what are you going to do about it? What's the point of putting stuff in here that you can't enforce, in other words? It's silly. Could you just put should instead of would? Well, uh, I don't know why. Has that ever been a problem? Has it ever been a problem that anybody went to a planning commission meeting or a board of supervisor meeting and, and, and sort of passed themselves off as speaking for the, the board? Do you? Uh, no. Okay. Well, you'd be the only one, I would think. <laughs> 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 no. No, I don't. I mean, I may say, I don't have to say they know I'm on here, so I mean, I don't we stand, we stand up and... And, and Rob goes all the time. And, and what district we're from, so or you don't say we're members of the BCA. Are you going to be happier if we take this out? Well, yeah. No, I'm going to be less unhappy if you don't. Okay, well, let's take it out then. Why not? Well, that's fine with me. Now, the other part is, on the next page, since we're doing this, this, this business is a subsection Little, uh, little VI, little Roman VI on page 7. It's in bold. It says, 
However, when it says any interested party can request the chairman to do an opportunity, but blah blah. However, they shall refrain from abusive conduct, personal charges. I assume that means like accusing people of things, not like charging money, or verbal attacks as opposed to what a physical attacks. I think it should just be any kind of attacks, not just verbal ones, <laughs> upon the character or motives of the members of the BCA, any county officers or employees, or other members of the public. Well, that's lovely. That's a, really a lovely thought. And my first comment is, when has any of that ever happened at a BCA meeting? And the answer is never. To my knowledge, did anybody ever attack anybody there or make a, an attack on their character or their motives? I never heard that. Or any, any county officers and employees said, I mean, like I sent a message around today, read the Constitution of Virginia. It's in the Bill of Rights. Only despotic governments try to, uh, try to tell people what they can and can't say. And if you can't stand the heat, like Harry Truman said, I hate to quote him, get out of the kitchen. If you don't want to be, you have some member of the public get up and say, Connie, you're the, you're like the worst person that's ever been on the BZA since I was born, and you don't know what you're talking about, and I think you're, and plus I think you're a dishonest creep. Well, that goes with the turf. And, you know, I'll say... Well, okay, so here's one thing. This says any interested party may be given the opportunity to rebut. However, they shall. So that could be anybody. Well, that's that for me. But how do you how do you enforce that? How do you how do you define abusive conduct or it's you anything know, we don't want to tax? I mean, you I know, what, think what is it? Well, I think it's. I think we're aiming for civility. Civility. You, you can civility. Well, okay. So I mean, I think the, the, the whole idea of this is it gives the chairman of the board. The Leverage. opportunity and but don't position. I have that over no, I have that over Robert's Why would you under Robert's rules, the chairman controls the meeting. Well, the chairman really can cut anybody do, off whenever he do wants. Do we degenerate into an hour discussion about whether some clause was violated, or could the chairman just say the chairman? I think that's board. part of the chairman's job. I think that it is. And, un 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 and, and unfortunately, board. some other chairmen are your other words. Don't do it because they don't know how to run a meeting because they never read Robert's Rules of Order. Yeah, the chairman picks up the gavel. It's right up there. It gets out of a hand and, and, and so wraps the gavel and says, you're out of order. And, you know, if they, if they want to challenge the chair under Robert's Rules of Order, they can appeal, and then the board has to vote how to support what the chairman said, you're out of order, or not support how it. About the chairman, and that's how it works. The chairman shall carry at all times a five-pound gavel. <laughs> <laughs> I just <laughs> think it's, it's, it's like gilding the lily. Like yeah. And it raises I, a lot of crazy I, questions. I, I don't think it, it, no more than is already the case, and well, I think what, what is happening, I, I would like to finish, what, what is happening to our local government here generally is that there is a rancorous and antagonistic uh, situation in many of the meetings. Hooray! And Just like there should be. Here, the up, government's the enemy okay, hold of up, the hold people. On, <laughs> hold well, on. That, if, if, if that Don't make me get <laughs> And I think it is having a very uh, detrimental effect on our uh, local government generally. And that's why this idea has been proper. Exactly why. You're exactly right. And I'll tell you what. Well, I, know who, I know who some of this is aimed at. And I say hooray. I don't think it's had a detrimental impact. Two people who are completely incompetent decided not to run because of exactly what you're talking about. And all I could say is hooray. Okay, David, David. Okay. Well, you just made my point for me. Great. Okay. That's the that's that's that is tough. That's liberty. Hold that's on. that's when that's you democracy. That people, that people, 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 people that live and pay taxes here have the right to come and if they want to challenge me or you or anybody else as long as you know they don't use profanity and within some due bounds they have the right to get up and say what they want and for a reasonable amount of time if they could drone on too long the chairman can say all right that's enough we got your point and he does that he does it to me and that's fine <laughs> uh, but 
as far as putting all these words in here that are totally ambiguous, I, I, when, do, when does it cross the line? I mean, some people, and I, I know some of some people, when you disagree with them, especially about like something like Trump, you know, that's abusive. That's, the, that, that's over the line. You know, you're deplorable, or you're a horrible person, or you're a white supremacist because you disagree with me. No, I, if people want to come and express themselves at a public meeting, and, and that's they their need, prerogative, and that's what they pay taxes for, I guess. They, they need to, well, they don't have a prerogative to be abusive and incivil and profane. You can't walk into the okay. courthouse, okay, so. and you can't say, call out fire. Yeah, we know that's against the okay, so, but there's got so, to be some civility. Okay, so I don't think we've had a problem with it. So it, it has to do it has to do with the chairman of the boards, whatever board it is, in that a chairman can control that if he if they wish to. The problem is that the chairmen aren't doing their job in some situations. And this is what we have because of it. But they have the five pound gavel. At any point in time, they can say, I'm sorry. That's well, it. That's I mean, if this is an issue where we differ, I mean, we apparently differ, do we have three votes to uh, do? I mean, is this a, what you have to talk well, about? I, these two issues? Yeah. Well, there okay. might have been one other, but I, I mean, Well, that's just one of say, Actually, the way he's got it written here, it's, it's deleted already. So well, I mean, I just put it yeah. in there. Yeah. I, I propose, I, okay. first thing, you all asked me to put it in, so I put it in, but I propose to delete it because it's nothing but what we, and we haven't had, a, I mean, maybe some of the other boards have. We haven't had the worst, I don't know, the worst thing that we've ever had at this, uh, in this board is uh, probably over that this very low sign where a lot of people came in here and certain people, you know, got a little unruly. And, and, and Alex said, hey, you're out of order, and that was the end of that. As a matter of fact, as I recall, Alex threatened to clear the room, which I don't know that he has the authority to do, but it worked. Yeah, so, I just said I was thinking about it. Yeah, you said he was thinking about it. Okay, very good. Well, and, and I want to say, uh, you, you know, while we're on the, the, uh, the topic, I mean, again, you've got this whole... Uh, thing of last month, uh, I don't know if you're aware of it or if you read it, but the people who were here accused me and Ron of being abusive toward them because we asked them a bunch of questions. And, uh, you know, I wanted to find out and Ron wanted to find out, like, well, how, how did this happen? And look and compare them to the people who were here tonight who were very honest and in all candor said, you know, kind of, well, we, we didn't even think of it until after we started, and then we looked it up, and then we said, uh-oh, we better get a variance. Okay. But but all this stuff of, I lived there all this time, and I don't remember when they enclosed the porch, and oh, no, come on, when you go. Anyway, they wrote a letter and said we were abusive, so I, two times, because when I saw it, I went back and I watched the video. Thank you, Rap Panic News. And I, and I watched it again when I did the minutes. And they accused me personally of telling them to be quiet and shushing not only the applicant, but the boyfriend. So I watched the video, only Alex told them to be quiet. I never said one word. Alex did it. But, you know, anyway, the point is, what one person finds is abusive, you, you know, is, is it's a subjective determination. And some people, especially when they're an applicant or somebody, or what, you know, you've had things up here where the neighbors come. We haven't had one lately, but we've had some. I mean, the neighbors get all riled up and sometimes, or, the, or at each other, because sometimes these things are, that's the reason they're here, because it's some kind of feud going on. But I, I just don't think, I don't think it's a problem that we haven't been able to deal with at our board. And, and the main board that's had the problem is the Board of Supervisors, okay. and they tabled it, so let's follow so there. So we move on, I, I'd be okay with just taking his revisions in this version and approving it. Is that, can we do, can leaving, we? Leaving in the bold. Well, no, no, I'll take that out, that was just a comment. This is cross out, right? That's all cross out. Yeah, just just stick with the cross outs, and his, his comment, obviously we're not putting that. What does this mean? No, 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 that, but I mean, the, the cross out there. Yeah, I, I, would, out. I would like to have um, something in here, doesn't because not to describe the abusive <coughs> conduct and so forth, 
but that uh, <coughs> about civility because that's what we believe. I think that's what Chris was alluding to a few moments ago. It's, but it's really what is that? What, okay, what is civility? Yeah, you can't. But it's just it. symbolic. It's like Chris said. Yeah, I know. It's like pornography. I know when I see. Okay, it. but here's the issue. I have just brought something up. If we can get a motion in a second, we could have a vote and we could be done with it. Good. I move that we do what he said. Um, what did you say? I yeah. said. <laughs> That we adopt, I move that we adopt, that we adopt it with I'll the one revision that you. Jennifer made to insert adoption of agenda. Can't we just tell him after the vote? No, we did that last time. Yeah, okay. did that. Okay. So let me finish. So we're going to put that in about, uh, we're going to insert about the adoption of the agenda in the meeting. And we're going to delete the things in bold and the comments relative there too that were that are highlighted on pages seven and eight or whatever. So and, and we'll just those see deletions that. and then we'll reprint it. And we can revisit this. We certainly can. Yeah, I guess you can lend it. Okay, so there's a lot of other stuff that's important. There's a, per, a second, a, a motion and a second. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Uh, I would just like to have it known that this. Uh, Refraining from abusive conduct, personal charges, and verbal attacks and character on the characters and motives of members of the BZA, any county officers or employees or other members of the public is somehow uh, problematic, uh, and that's why we're it's getting voted down. Yes, yeah, so it's hard to define. Right. It's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not, not, it's not because we disagree with. No, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a great concept, but it's it's just it's a concept. Well, you know, what like I, pornography, it's great. What, what <laughs> I see is that the it it only yeah, that reinforces right. the chairman and his ability to run the meeting. But I'm I'm okay. No downside visible. I'm okay with that. without that. I mean, and it's like I said, it's, it's it's implied in Robert's rules of order. Yeah, I mean, I think we can say. And so, how can you be against it if it's implied in Robert's rules? Well, order? Chris, the only <laughs> because it, lay, it lays it on the chairman. Well, no, it doesn't. Well, it already lay it on, is on. No, it the doesn't chair. lay it on the chairman. It just puts it out there. And the county doesn't even own a, a current edition of Robert's rules, so we need to. Who does? The county does not own. One. I have one. Okay. I have one. So we have a motion and a second. Can we just go ahead and vote? Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nay. Nay. Okay. I think we need to have okay. at least one more. <clears throat> well, if you want to come up with a short, very short sentence, and we can talk about that another time. Okay. Okay, so it's passed. Great. Okay. Now, annual report. I've got 10 copies. There are very minor little changes made. And. What year is this one? 2016. <laughs> No, it's 2018. <laughs> and there's copies for you all. If you want to. Another cheap song. I mean, it isn't really that dramatic. It's basically the exact same thing as the other. But then you can't criticize the zoning in this. It's a historical the document. You don't know where it starts. Where is the brand? Second paragraph. That's abusive. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> and not civil. There's, there's one up here in the here. first paragraph before the C. This one. Where does it go? To, after the word it commission. Ends, it just doesn't Oh, the paren. Oh, paren. It doesn't open. It doesn't open. Oh, good. Okay. I see. So there's I'm one up sorry, here. Sorry, I'm the paragraph. So where is it? Okay, so it start uh, as who, who, and founder. Okay, good call. Thank you. That's great. Once and every, you're always known. Heaven. That's amazing. And then you pick up those, those typos a mile away. Okay, is that all we can say? Okay. You forgot to put in here again, I think, that you got that clarification from me about the Attorney General's opinion. I thought that was back. Oh, there's stuff in the back? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't know. I'm saving paper by it. Yeah, that last paper. Good. Printing it front, forwards and back. Very nice. So is this okay then? I'll put the paran in. We'll print it on stationery for the county station. I think it's on parchment. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's abusive. Now the next thing is: there any follow-up discussion about the comprehensive plan? Going to get a report. Well, I don't know. Do you want to report about what they what have they decided this month? They had a work session. <laughs> they did have a work session, and basically. Uh, 
they have organized the uh, editing and rewriting of the comprehensive plan <coughs> to be uh, proffered at the next work session and then uh, followed by a public meeting where the public is invited to uh, comment and and or uh, offer changes to the comprehensive plan. But it's still very much a work in process. But I would think that one or two more work sessions, which tend to happen on the base generally once or twice a month, and the uh, public meeting uh, engendered by that will happen. So I'm thinking it's a two-month process, probably, two or three, and then it goes to the supervisors. Have they, made, have they incorporated some of the comments and suggestions that they we incorporate, They were basically discussing about 20 comments that they had either gotten during the meetings or uh, were written and uh, <laughs> given to the chairman of the planning commission. Okay. Is there any other discussion on this? Did they update their statistics? No. The, 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 the statistics the were done. just made available, I think, in May. So I, I, re I repeat, I mean, all I have to say about it, I don't want to belabor it, but I have the same comment as last month. Once they get the new statistics, in my view, I don't know if the board agrees or not, it's in, it was what was in our letter, they have to discuss it, and and they haven't done that. They uh, obviously I was at the work session, and yeah, they they divvied it all up, and they carved it all up and said somebody who uh, I don't know Christine's going to do that one chapter, and then Gary's going to do the implementation chapter, but they never discussed at all what okay what changes are do we agree that what's the sense of the commission of what should be in there. They just farmed it all out, and I guess whoever's writing it can write whatever they well, want. Individual homework assignments. But I, I mean, to me, the statute says the the, the 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 commission, not individual members, shall make a careful and whatever analysis of the data, and then come to some consensus. I mean, that's why they make the, in my opinion, make this big, you know, task of writing it. The writing of it's easy. The, the part that's hard is get sit around the table and discuss it. I, I sat through as much of the two work sessions as I could stand. They didn't discuss anything. They discussed, I mean, anything substantive. They discussed the procedure, and they discussed should we go with a, a modified hangout or a limited modified hangout or a very limited modified hangout, and should they this, and then who's going to do it, and should we get an outside person, or should we not, and should we wait, can we find out if we're going to get one, or what are they going to do to the budget? They, but they didn't have one, that, you know, I gave them a whole thing from Fairfax. Thank you. Okay. Time, my time. Three minutes are up. <laughs> um, that's my main accomplishment. I got Gary Light up to five minutes now. <laughs> now I'm going to keep on going and try and get him up to 7.5 and go to over again. But anyway, they didn't discuss any of the cell tower stuff. And here we have a couple cell towers coming on. We could put the comp plan like Fairfax did. And the best thing about Fairfax is a whole series, I mean, it's two or three pages. It's about 10 or 15 different standards. Most of them are how it's going to be affect the neighboring properties. We wouldn't have to change hardly any words. It doesn't even say Fairfax County in there. So we could steal it lock, stock, and barrel. And the beauty of it is it's already been tested in court by none other than, uh, what do you call it, by two big companies. I'm say CWS might have been one of them, but uh, I can't think who they are now. But it's two great big ginormous telecom companies that were, that were turned down up there that had to go to the BZA. And the BZA turned them down based on their comp plan. They took it to court. The court said they didn't meet the standards. Too bad, too sad. And they didn't appeal it. They didn't take it to the Supreme Court. So great. The, the ruling stood. Well, that's great. Why don't, why don't we emulate that? I mean, everybody in the county that I can think of, Phil, from Phil Irwin to wherever, that's their biggest concern, is the unsightliness of these towers and how they're sighted. And, you know, give the county some 
way to you know, do something effective. And what feedback did I get? Zero. Uh, and, you know, other things like rich top development. Some of you talked about that at the last meeting. Ron came up there and talked about rich top development. First of all, wh when are they going to do something like ask the Attorney General, do they have the authority to do that? Because I don't think they do. I mean, I, I, I'm against, don't get me wrong, I'm not in favor of rich top development myself, but exactly what is it? And it's, it's also like pornography, you know? <laughs> you know, I know it when I see it, when I see the lights on suddenly on the top of a hill, uh, that's rich top development, well, you can see it out of your kitchen window, but what exactly is it? And how are you going to restrict it? And how can you tell somebody what they can or can't do on their own property if they own it? I don't know the answer to that, but I. But well, isn't that called zoning? Well, yeah, but no, you have to have a you have, you, know, you have to have a reason. You have to have a a, a pretty strong reason. And you have to have a basis. In that, that's what I did. I went and tried to find ordinances that had to do with rich top development. And there are none that specifically deal with the ridgetop development. What it deals with is the height of the buildings that are allowed to be built on ridgetops. Mm -hmm. But they do and not restrict the building of a structure on the ridgetops. And possibly why. And, and, and well, that's, <coughs> you look that at, could be incorporated. You, yeah, you could do it. The, 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 reason, the thing we've got now is a conservation district where you have a lot of slope. I mean, it's anything that's above 20%. 20%? Is that is right? Is it 2 zero? Michelle? I think What's from yeah. conservation is 20% slope? I think so. So it's a 40 Probably degree angle. angle. Right? A 45 degree angle is 100% slope. Oh, mm -hmm. A percent is 20 <coughs> feet rise and 100 feet of run. A 100% slope is 100 feet of rise and 100 feet so of run. So that's 45. So that's 45. 45 Are you serious? Yes. Yeah, he is. 40, 45 degrees is hard to walk on. Right. That's that steep. Okay, well, so we've got the definition of conservation. So if you want to say it, put it in the conservation zone. Then from the top of any ridge in a conservation zone, that would be, that would do fine. Say you can't build or the building height, you have to set back from the ridge top a distance equal to the building height so that the, the house isn't sticking above the ridge, I guess. And there's also, in the, in the studies, stuff that I looked at, they actually specify a certain elevation as qualifying for ridge top. Okay. So, you know, if it's below that elevation, it's not. Then it doesn't qualify, you know, that's. Right. Well, that, that way you all, don't that's, the rich top all that's the rich great. Make, I don't know. Figure it out. There's topographic okay. maps, but they could do it. But just, just putting it in there the way it is now. There's nothing. There's not a word in the zoning ordinance about it. So, Michelle's back there. Ask her. If somebody comes in, and how's she supposed to enforce a thing like that? Well, there isn't any restriction. No. Right. It no, just no. It's in the comp plan. It says it should be discouraged. I don't know how. How are you supposed to discourage it? Same way you do with the identifying uh, putting it in the uh, behavior. In the zoning so, rules. Well, okay, but put what in? And I, again, I'm telling you, I think you've got some issues because there were some cases. I, I think it. you've come up with a, a number of very reasonable. Well, uh, well you could put restrictions. Well, put me on the planning. You could put road requirements. <laughs> on, you could put roadway requirements going to. You know, and, um, another uh, another thing though is there's some there's some issues that there's some cases that came out of Loudoun County, and and uh, the the. They wanted to do some kind of development, and the neighboring landowners, you know, took it to court and said it, it, it like wrecked their viewship because they had to look at whatever it was. And the court just kind of threw that out and said, "There's no, you don't have the right to of what your view is because you, if you want to protect your view, you go buy it, you know, and then you can control what's built on somebody else's property." And if you think about it, you know, uh, there are a lot of areas or a lot of situations where you just have a, a re you're, you're setting up a real, like, NIMBY nightmare. There, put that in the paper. NIMBY nightmare. Because somebody could buy a five-acre, this, like these, they could buy a three-acre lot, and some guy, how, how far is the view shed? Half a mile or three-quarters of a mile or a quarter mile? I don't know. But some guy a mile away could say, oh, I'm going to build this thing. And they say, 
hey, we don't like that to reckon on a view of where we used to look out and sit on the porch, and now there's a house there, which we don't like. Okay. So I think we've got the anyway, basic points. They need to focus on some things and discuss these things at the planning commission. And, and then people are delighted to help them write it if they would ever decide what they want to do instead of sitting around deciding how difficult doing anything would be. <laughs> okay, so let's say we're done with the planning. Yeah. We're done. Okay. <laughs> okay, now the next item is discussion of Harmony Manor skyline and notice of violation dated March 6, 2019. I would enter just this one thought for my position is I have had in the past a conflict of interest related to this property, but I have no involvement with it of any kind now, nor have I in a number of years. So I don't think I have a conflict of interest. But I'm just pre presenting that as you were involved in the original. Yeah. Well, sale so, whatever years so ago. Many, no, I actually have never been. In, I've listed it for a period of time, yeah, so, but I was not actually involved in the sale. So they're allowed three rooms, three. Um, well, but they they're, but they're advertising five. But this being said, what I was hoping to do was to short circuit this tonight because it wasn't the the people were not noticed. To my knowledge, I mean, wait, wait, wait. I'm just saying they were not noticed. I don't think we litigate the whole case tonight. Oh no, no. we're just going to decide whether to I think I think it would be reasonable based on what my understanding is to have this brought forward to a meeting. Yeah, and the, have it the proposal. reviewed and understand what's going on, and so so because a public hearing, a public hearing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And but I mean, I don't think I mean, I'm hoping to avoid like an hour-long discussion tonight. No, I don't. I, the only thing that I okay. would do is that's the motion. I'll make the motion. I move that we set it for a, a revocation hearing at our June meeting. And I mean, what I would just throw out is we would be examining the recent history related to the violations. Alleged violations. Well, I mean, she noticed them and they did not appeal. Well, okay, correct? but we haven't made any findings yet. So okay, right. Just giving them the benefit of the doubt. But review the application, or review the permit right. for its performance and then to take whatever action would be appropriate. I don't know that we have to go into it as we're going to revoke it because that is one of our options. Well, that's the only way we can have a hearing. So we could decide at the end of the meeting, well, based on the evidence, we're not going to revoke it. Or we are. So when, when, if we revoke something, then how many, how much time do they have to cease um, well, operations? Well, if they're in violation. Well, if they're, if they, their permit is revoked, they have to stop. They either yeah, have to, they have, to, they have no permit anymore. They have they to have reapply. So, so they it's, it, it, it's or immediate or they've got to? Yeah. yeah. I mean, but we could say whatever. We could do this. Yes. But I'm not even sure why we need to, to worry about that. We'll, we'll, we'll worry about that the next time. Let's let's have the hearing. But I mean, so that's my, but my point of view is re revocation is one option, but it's not. We could also impose conditions. We could. No. They've got conditions. You, you, no, cannot, no. you cannot modify the permitted without their consent because it's a vested right. So you, you can't start changing. Well, no, okay. Conditions. What I'm talking about is if there were any conditions that we could like get at them to say, no, no, just to. That maybe they can operate without being in violation. I'm not sure that they can, to be honest with you, under the way that they're doing it. Well, I, I, there, are, there, are, there are so many. Well, Let's see what happens next time. Okay, but, so, uh, but what are we advertising? We're going to advertise a public hearing that we're going to consider revocation of the permit for violation of the conditions, including but not limited to the ones in uh, the zoning administrator's letter in March. Because there's other apparent ones. They're, they're using it for wine tastings for people that aren't staying there. Which is, I, I don't know, that, yeah, to me, that's a bar. That's not a and b they turned, it, they turned it into a retail business. So, okay. they're having, they to, they're having to, according to our website, they're having people <laughs> come there to have wine tastings and drink wine and then leave. And they're events. having cooking classes, what? they're having events, weddings. And they're having events and weddings and, and so all that. So I'm know. just asking because I didn't really want to discuss this tonight. Okay. Right. But is that supposed <laughs> to be a winery or no, it's a B and B and that's it. Okay. Three room B and B. So 
and they only serve the people that come there. So they give them breakfast. And they're only supposed to give them breakfast. Yeah. Though. I mean, I guess they want to give them a, a, a you know, they, 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 they can give them a complimentary bottle of wine, but they can't sell them a bottle of wine. Yeah. Okay, okay. So we've got a motion to. I'll second it. To have Is the there game. any further discussion? And we're going to do this at the next meeting. Right. right? And you're, we're going to advertise. Yep, it. and then I'll know. Um, the, the other one that was up on top of the hill, the little Parma or something like but that. But we're not discussing that. Right? Is, 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 is still it under construction. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so how about we have a motion? We have a motion and a second. We've discussed it all we need to, right? Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Now, I have a couple questions about the procedure we're going to use because our new procedure rules don't say anything about revocation here. So I'll just tell you sort of the way I see it. It says you have to have a public hearing. So based on that attorney general's opinion, I think uh, the neighboring property, of you have to, they have to be able to yes. speak. Okay. The, the, I, the way I see it, we would call on the zoning administrator to report on her letter. And we would, in other words, we would sort of do it in a similar way to a, an appeal of the zoning administrator. They are, I assume, a corporation. They're an LLC. Yeah, so, so, would, so, would, 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 so do they need a lawyer? No, they a lawyer. Well, they're an LLC. Well, if they're going to appear, I mean, they can, they can appear and present facts, but they can't do we, make legal do, arguments. Do we get anything from their tax? Because do, uh, do we have lodging tax? Yeah, we can find that out. So we need to get the lodging tax? Well, well, we don't necessarily have to complete everything at this one hearing, but we can ask for evidence because right. we're not, okay. we're not well, doing the hearing. Well, we it seems they, they that, that the idea of yeah, a revocation hearing might be somewhat premature. More, it would seem, is a fact finding as to no. what the, the ordinance present is. use is. And we don't have actually. There is no grounds for a fact hearing on fact finding. I don't believe, anyways. Is there mean? other than well, 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 the ordinance? They're all. They're all a hearing is a fact finding. Yeah, right. Well, the hearing's the fact finding well, to yeah, find yeah. out if they're in violation of their conditions. Quick, yeah. not. Hold on, quick question. You sent them a notice of violation. Yes, sir. They did not appeal it. Correct. And you have reason to believe the violations continued. It's on the website. It appears to be. Is that on the I, I can't one or the other. Okay, but so we're we're there's no evidence to say they are not violating anymore and they responded to her letter, right? Is that line? No, there's not any evidence okay. that they have been Okay, that's worse. Right. Okay, so we've and, already and, had and her letter only dealt with the number of rooms and the events. But things like, I don't know what you call it, a wine bar or whatever, or wine tastings or whatever that part of the operation is, that, that's no Okay, so room. the people will be noticed. Yep. Like they'll get letters in, in addition to the newspaper, correct? Oh, no, I'm going to send okay. them a letter. I have to okay. get them a letter. I'm going okay. to the neighbors too. Okay. Up there on the park lane. Okay, well. I think so we have a list. Can we adjourn the meeting now? I don't know. Is that the last thing? Yeah, that was I'll the last thing. Okay. Discussion of family oh, apartments? No. 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 Do you have any like, little kernels of wisdom to share with us? Just that we need, I mean, reading the ordinance, there's, there's... It needs to be much tighter and a much longer period much, of time. I mean, even, even down to the extent that it's, it's, it's a family, it's designated as family, and to a certain extent that can even be discriminatory, in that it, it, you can't really limit that right just to family members because particularly particularly today because you try to find a family to, to find a family in 2020 in 2019 or whatever. I mean it's, it's all it's saying, all over the board. It's the whole world. It, that's what I mean. It's all over the board. So it needs to be looked at and and rewritten so that it you know all one kind that it works. I mean I'm not you know I'm not against it. And the and the other thing, the other thing we've always talked about is the two year it needs to be much longer. It needs to be much longer. It should be forever. You know, but you would have to make the finding that the family restriction is. I don't know why they even have that, uh, as opposed to they got the efficiency apartment. So yeah. if you want to have an efficiency apartment in another building, what's it? What I mean, from a zone, my view of it's always been from a zoning standpoint, which is the use of the land, the noise, the lights, the, the drain field, and all that. 
What difference is it, traffic? No, I think What that, difference does it make if it's a family? No, there is a difference because it's within 200 feet of the main house, so it becomes more of an impact on the main house where you might have a different type of tenant if they were off okay, but on some part. But in terms of the neighbors and the strain it puts on the on the land and all less that. strain probably on neighbors because it's more of the house compound as opposed to another rental on okay, well, But there's yeah. also and also just be aware that the uh, uh, assessments Theory on those things. Also, in that on those family apartments, they actually assess them at less per square foot than the main residence or whatever. And that to me, it's but I don't know why we you get in that. Well, we don't need to get into that, but it's yeah. but it's something that could be discussed in the process. And that the commissioner of revenue would be, you know, and I talked to her about that. And she said, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it's 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 a structure that somebody's living in. And why is it, you know? Square footage to the lower bound, and it can't actually that came out of the assessment company. All right. So I, make, I make a motion that you write it up and we we'll give it to Chris and let him take it to the county commission. You write that to the next meeting. Okay, is there a motion to it? I do so make that motion. Okay. I can vote on my own motion. You never right. voted on his motion. Wait, wait. Then you second. <coughs> what is his motion? Yeah, we 